Do you sometimes feel that you're maybe not good enough to do what you want or that maybe that you're not ready? Do you wish that you could be more certain about yourself, about your path and about the decisions that you're making and really step into your power and create a life of more success, abundance, freedom, but you're kind of wondering how or you're not sure if you can actually do that. Now in this video, I want to share with you eight ways that you can improve your self-esteem and also how you see yourself so you can create a life that you truly want because you do get to have whatever is that you want nothing is off limit you truly can have anything and everything that you want but it truly starts with having that trust in yourself believing yourself and seeing yourself as that person that truly can have whatever is that you want and in this video i want to share with you those eight ways that you can really start tapping into your inner power increase your self-esteem and also how you see yourself so you can truly create that life that you want. So stay tuned. Hello to beautiful soul. Welcome back to another video. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. My name is Kay Sanders and this channel is all about helping awakening souls really awaken to their power within, step into their power and create a life of more success, abundance and freedom all while living their life on purpose. And if that's you, if you're on your spiritual awakening journey, I do want to extend an invitation. Please be sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever I release my content. So self-esteem is really the key factor in creating a life that you truly want. Because if you don't believe that you can actually do this, that you're good enough to have the life that you want, that you're deserving of having the life that you want, that it's going to be hard or whatnot, if you have any of those beliefs, that's truly going to affect you from or hold you back, keeping you stuck from really living the life that you only dream about living or that you truly wish you could be living. So self-esteem and how you see yourself is truly truly very very important because if you don't see yourself as that person that can truly have what you want then of course you're not going to be able to create it if you're having doubt around it well then too you're not going to be able to create if you don't have that inner certainty that yes anything and everything that i want is truly possible for me and i can have what i want then too you're going to end up settling for what you truly want so I want to share with you those eight ways that you can start improving on your self-esteem and also how you see yourself so you can finally create the life that up until this point you have only dreamed about or maybe you haven't even dreamed about that yet. Maybe you haven't even allowed yourself to dream bigger than what you are experiencing at this time. So with these eight ways that can really kickstart that so you can start opening yourself up to a grander view of what's truly possible for you and then start also allowing it in. So the first step here is you want to uncover and challenge your limiting beliefs because if you don't have what you want yet, it's not because you're not meant to have it because you are you're meant to have whatever it is that you want. It's you have certain beliefs that are actually holding you back. And that's your ego trying to keep you safe. That's like the purpose of the ego is trying to keep you safe because anything outside of your comfort zone, anything that's out there, that's the unknown, what's well, scary, it's threatening the ego and it tries to keep you safe. So whenever you're trying to go for something much, much bigger, much more expanded and evolved, your e ego is going into fear mode like, what? You want to do that? No, we're not doing that. No, let me just throw all kind of stuff at you. What? No, you're not good enough. You can do this. Uh, who are you to actually think about that you ha can have that? And uh, do you really think you can handle all that? Right? So your ego is throwing all of those things at you. And it is so important for you to really uncover what those beliefs are. What are those limiting beliefs that you're holding on to right now? And they are most likely also so deeply ingrained in you. It's going to take you some time to really uncover it. You really want to get to the root of it and usually go beneath or beyond the first thing that pops to mind. Because your ego is going to feed you just enough to satisfy you, but it's not going to allow you to really go deep. So here you really want to take time to go deep. You want to really go as deep as you can. You want to challenge your beliefs. You want to go to the root of what you think your beliefs are. Really go to the root of it. Where did it come from? And then challenge your beliefs. Are they even of truth? Is it really true that you are not good enough to do something? Is it really true that making money is hard, that you can't have the life that you would love to live, that only special people get to have success, abundance, and actually do their soul's work and actually make a good living doing so? 
challenge that. Allow yourself to uncover the truth because yes, these may be your truth at this time, but they are not the collective truth. And here you are then tap into the higher truth. What is the higher truth here? Yeah, maybe up until this point, it was hard for you to have what you want, but the higher truth is I'm at least good enough to get started. There is more possible for me. I can grow into this, right? Because anything and everything that you want is possible for you. You just are not that person yet. You have to grow into that. And growing into it also means letting go of those beliefs, like really uncovering and challenging those beliefs to then let them go, to release them, to then also embody a new set of beliefs. If you know that these are your beliefs that you've had up until this point and you're challenging, you're seeing the truth and the higher truth here, well, then you have awareness. And I always say with awareness comes the power of choice. Then you can decide, hmm, I really don't like believing this. Well, what do I want to believe instead? Embody those new set of beliefs that are really in alignment with what you want instead. That's the first step. It's really uncovering and challenging your beliefs, which then moves you into the second step here. So once you really know what you want instead, you have those new set of beliefs, then you turn them into positive affirmations and also turn start using a positive self-talk. Because positive affirmations and positive self-talk can be so powerful if you're doing it the right way. Now, I just recently released a video of why affirmations alone don't work. And I highly recommend check out that video. The, the link is in the description below. But positive affirmations and positive self-talk can help you change your beliefs, change from the inside out. However, you want to go deeper. So basically you're starting like this. You're turning your limiting beliefs into positive affirmations. You also ideally maybe want to clear some of that negative energy around those limiting beliefs as well to let go of that. But then you want to really use those p a positive affirmation and the self-talk in a manner to help you feel better. You want to feel those affirmations. You want to feel into that positive self-talk. So let's say you really want to create a um, highly successful spiritual business where you make an amazing impact. You're impacting millions of people and you're just feeling so fulfilled doing so. And it's so easy and you're making a ton of money and maybe even have an amount in mind. What you then do is you turn it into positive affirmations. One thing I like to do is I start out with, I'm so happy and grateful now that, and then fill in the blank, create those affirmations, uh, be more elaborate, like not just, you know, have a successful business, but go beyond that. Like, I like to say something like, I'm so happy and grateful now that I have an absolute amazingly successful business, a coaching and healing business where I get to impact millions of awakening souls to really help them awaken to their power within. Everything is so easy and I'm now also making the income that I want. I want to, I'm making uh, X amount of money each and every month and the money flows into my life with such ease and grace. Uh, it blows my mind. You want to tap into the feeling of it. And then when you're reading those affirmations, and even if you're using that as a self-talk, like let's say you're looking into the mirror and you're speaking to yourself using a positive uh, self-talk. You don't just want to say it or read it, but you want to feel it. When you're envisioning this beautiful business or whatever it is that you want, you really envision it and you're seeing it, you're feeling it. So let's say you want to create that highly successful business that truly fulfills you. Well, tap into the feeling of deep fulfillment, the gratitude for this beautiful, beautiful business where you can really make that impact, where you're really Im impacting so many souls. Feel it. That is really the missing piece to making affirmations work. And I talk more about that in that video that I just mentioned about why affirmations alone don't work, but really feeling that tapping into the feeling of those affirmations that then changes your vibration. That also, of course, makes you feel better, right? Because let's say you're doubting yourself around creating the life that you want. Let's say you're in a financial hardship and you really want to get out of that. And you are working through those beliefs about making money is hard. I don't deserve. I'm not worthy. Yada, yada, yada. And then you're tapping into like the feeling like how, how would you feel when you have an abundance of money where you no longer have to worry about paying your bills and having, you know, where's the money coming from or any of that? How will that feel when you tap into that feeling, like really feeling abundant, feeling free? 
and you're feeling that that also improves your self-esteem and the, the, the way you see yourself because the positive affirmations when you're writing them uh, properly then you are writing it from point of view like what you want to create what you want to experience well then you're then all start looking at yourself as a person that actually has that so it's so really so very powerful using those affirmations and self-talk and tapping into the feeling of it and then the third way is you want to heal your past because low self-esteem and if you're low if you're not seeing yourself as the person that really has what you truly want if you're feeling stuck if you're holding yourself back and all of those things that's because you have past experiences past experience that taught you it's not safe to speak up it's not safe to be out there or you know you're gonna get hurt or anything like that so you want to heal your past those unresolved issues those painful memories anything that you can think of that still holds somewhat of a that negative punch like when you think about it you're like eh, you're kind of flinching that's what i'm talking about you want to uncover those and you want to heal them because low self-esteem is not something that you just that's just who you are right it's something that you have learned not believing in yourself doubting yourself not being certain that you can truly have what you want it's not not something that you are it's something that you have learned and anything that you have learned can be unlearned and then relearn in a better more uplifted way so when you heal those emotional charges around those past experiences of anything that happened to you in the past that is still affecting you ne negatively now that is causing to maybe look at yourself as someone that can have what you want someone that is not worthy or deserving of having the, what you want anything like that you want to clear that because it's affecting you today it's still affecting you all those painful memories all these painful experiences you've had uh when someone said no don't do this you can't do this you're gonna get hurt let's say when you were growing up and your parents always said don't do this don't dream too big or hey don't do this because you're gonna get hurt you know as a child you're learning like, oh i gotta be careful right uh and things like that so you want to uncover that and then release the emotional charge around them. and i also have a video i want to share with you it's a light language activation to really help you heal the emotional wounds that you have gained you know growing up and even if you say well i had an amazing childhood i did too however there were also things that i uncovered that were still painful so even though you had a really amazing childhood there's still certain instances that were painful maybe you had your 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 first heartbreak or you you know something happened or maybe your parents fought and you saw that or maybe you, your parents were in a bad mood and they said something to you that well as a little child you didn't understand now you as the adult self you like wow you know my parents did whatever they could at that time but your inner child is still wounded is still affected so by you clearing those emotional wounds that can also increase your self-esteem how you see yourself and also uplift your vibration to be in alignment with what you truly want and also then create the life that you want without holding back without limiting yourself without settling for anything less so the video the link to the video is also in the description below about removing those emotional wounds so you can listen to that if there's anything in particular you want to heal and release you can actually put your focus and attention onto it as you're listening to the light language and heal and clear that but healing your past is so powerful and so important in order for you to for one feel better to uh, love yourself more to believe in yourself more to be more certain that you can have whatever that you want and of course then take those aligned steps that are really create the life that you want and in the fourth way here is that you want to learn and grow from your challenges from all those setbacks those so-called failures and I don't really see failure as something bad because failure is only feedback right it's like any challenge you've experienced any you know these setbacks these so-called failures they are giving you an opportunity to grow from that to learn from that and to transform it's truly an opportunity for immense growth and transformation because when you're looking back over your life and looking over all these big challenges that you experience and maybe even right now you're going through some experiences that are not so good when you allow yourself to see the lesson in that to see the gift in that that is so powerful because anything and everything holds a lesson holds a message holds a gift when you're feeling triggered about something that too holds a gift holds a lesson and also maybe a message so anything that you have gone through through your life 
allow yourself to learn from those challenges. Allow yourself to grow from that. Because anything, everything happens for a reason. It happens to your highest and greatest good. And of course, you know, it also happens in divine timing. That That's really the mantra that I uh, embodied early on because I too have my fair share of really difficult times, really challenging times that also not down my self-esteem. For the longest time, I had social anxiety. I didn't want to go anywhere. I was the kind of person that was always in the back of the room. I uh, don't see me. Don't look at me. Oh my God, I don't want to be heard. I don't want to be seen. That was me because, and I share this with you right now because I, I really want you to understand that. I understand what you're going through is that my ex-husband, my son's father, he was very abusive. Not so much physically, but mentally. I mean, I was a mess. I didn't think I was good enough to do anything. I had all these beliefs. I was emotionally shut down for the longest time because I had gotten hurt so bad. So my self-esteem was like non-existing, okay? And I had to learn from my experience. I did everything that I'm sharing with you right now. These eight ways that I'm sharing with you, I did them myself. And there is a way to get out of whatever you experience and to learn from that. I learned so much from the experience I had with my ex-husband. Do I want to go through it again? Heck no. But looking back, I'm so grateful for all that he put me through because it made me who I am today. I learned so much from that. If I wouldn't have gone through it, I would have never found my way to the spiritual path. I would have never found my, my, my spiritual way. Or maybe I would have eventually, but then other things would have had to happen in order for me to awaken. So allow yourself to really learn and grow from your past experience, those challenges and setbacks, because they can truly help you transform and grow. Now, when I look at something, when something doesn't go so well, I allow myself to really tune in like, okay, what can I learn from this? What is the message here? What do I need to heal that caused me to attract that into my life? So when you allow yourself to do that, this is so powerful. And that too can improve your self-esteem and how you see yourself. Because when you're growing through those challenges, well, you are seeing yourself then more as a person that, well, I am empowered. I have the strength in me to make it through whatever comes at me. So allow yourself to learn from your challenges. Allow yourself to grow from that. That is truly powerful. Then the fifth way is, make self-care a must. You want to have time to really go with it because you need that time and space for that self-discovery. In order to really uncover who you truly are, you're not going to find it by constantly being busy and distracted and all that outside stuff. But it's like really the time to go within. And the more time you can take to go with and to really discover who you are, then you may be also realizing, you know what? I'm actually a pretty amazing person. I'm worthy to have whatever I want. I deserve to have a beautiful life. I can allow things to be easy. You know what? I achieved all these amazing things. Like really take some time to also uncover all the amazing things about yourself. All the things that you actually love about yourself. All the things you appreciate about yourself. Really take that time to go within to also uncover what, what is maybe still holding me back. Because going back to the first step here is about uncovering and challenging your beliefs. That too requires that time to go within because, well, you got to uncover what's going on, right? So take time to really go within to uncover as much as you can to also uncover you, who you truly are deep within. Not the person you look at in the mirror every single day, but the person that's deep within you, your soul, your awakened self, your empowered self, because it's already within you. And then the sixth way here is your past leaves clues. So here, look back over your life and allow yourself to uncover what, what are all the things you have accomplished. For one, you learn how to walk, right? <laughs> you learn how to talk. You learn how to take care of yourself. You learn how to, you know, drive. You got a driver license. You graduated from school, whether it's high school or college or whatever. You had your first job and you got your first paycheck. You got paid for the work that you did. You probably helped someone, maybe yesterday, maybe today. You have made an impact in the world already. You're taking care of someone. You overcame some massive challenges. If you're a parent, well, you became a parent and you raised a child. There's so many beautiful things in your past that are we are often overlooking that. 
We often don't look back at like all these things that we accomplished, right? I mean, just learning how to walk is a huge accomplishment. Think of it. Just going through high school or kindergarten or elementary school, that is an accomplishment, right? Moving out, being on your own for the very first time, that is a huge accomplishment. So allow yourself to look back and it really draw strength from your past accomplishments. Because you are an amazing soul. You have experienced a lot already. You have accomplished a lot already. You've had many wins. And also look at those wins you have on a daily basis. And I'm not talking about these big wins. I'm talking about the small wins. Maybe you set a goal that maybe you want to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning now. Maybe you're starting that. And hey, I got up this morning. Or maybe you want to be more positive. And maybe that day you were more positive. Look at those small wins and draw strength from that because your past truly leaves clues. Even if you may not see it at this time, but your past truly leaves clues and draw strength from that. Then the seventh way here is you want to reclaim your identity. And what I mean with that is we often hide behind so many masks especially as you're just maybe coming out of the spiritual closet or maybe you haven't even really come out. Maybe you're hiding behind a mask of, you know, you don't want people to really know about that you're into the woo-woo stuff, right? Because maybe they look at you funny. Or maybe you don't want to show your true face about because you have gotten hurt before. And you're hiding behind all these different masks to kind of fit in. And now it's really time for you to reclaim your identity that in itself will boost your self-esteem and how you see yourself. Because who are you truly beneath all of those layers of the mask that you're hiding behind? And believe me, we all do. I did for a very long time. There's still certain masks that I still hide behind because it's safer that way. And it, it, but it's truly about reclaiming your identity. The as much as you possibly can. Yeah, of course, like I said, I still hide behind certain masks to stay safe, especially when it comes to dating. I gotta admit that I'm still, I haven't quite healed from my wounds from you know getting hurt so much, but in the most important part is like, I, I reclaim my identity by who I am, especially around the spiritual aspect. And I see a lot and I hear from clients and people I talk to that they're afraid of what other people may think when they are showing who they really are, when they're shining their light, when they're talking about the, the spiritual, the things that they're experiencing. And believe me, I used to feel weirded out whenever I was like, like, hey, you know, I just had spirit talk to me. Like, hey, you know, Toth came to me or Anubis came to me and, you know, I experienced this and I experienced that. I, I used to feel weirded out about it, but until I really reclaim my identity and I want to invite you to do that too. Reclaim your identity. Be proud of who you are. All of who you are. The good, the bad, the ugly. There's still aspects about, about me that I'm still working on. But you know what? I don't care. I am who I am. And I'm so proud of who I am. And I want to invite you to do the same. Be proud of who you are. You are perfect in just the way you are. Now you can choose to improve certain things because for your sake. Never do that for anyone else but yourself. But reclaim your identity. Look at your, look yourself in the mirror and see yourself for the very first time. Like really see yourself. Look into your eyes. Allow yourself to see who you are at soul level. And then reclaim that part. Reclaim that identity. Who you truly are deep within. And embody that. Be proud of who you are. There's nothing wrong with you. Nothing. You're perfect just the way you are. But like I said, you can always improve certain aspects that you seem you, that you feel you want to improve because you just want to become a better version of yourself. But the way you are right now, you're already perfect. So seventh part here, the seventh step is reclaim your identity. And then the eighth and final step is stop caring what other people think. Stop caring about what other people say about you. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the people that love you, they love you for who you are. What matters the most is that you accept yourself for who you are, what you are, how you show up and everything. Like I said, it goes back to also reclaiming your identity. 
Stop caring what other people think because you're not going to make every everyone happy. There's always going to be someone that doesn't like what you say, that doesn't like how you dress, that doesn't like how you show up. It doesn't matter. The one thing that matters is that you accept yourself for who you are, that you love yourself for who you are. Who cares about anyone else? Because at the end of the day, who is the most important person in your life? That's you. You are the most important person in your life. Now, of course, you also have family. I'm not saying, it, but at the end of the day, you know, if everyone would be gone, who would be left? You. So don't care what other people think. They're probably, if they have a problem, they're probably just jealous of you or they're not happy with themselves and they're letting it out on other people around them. Maybe you. So allow yourself to really reclaim your identity, step into your power and don't give a, you know what, about what anyone else says or thinks about you. All that matters is that you love yourself, accept yourself uh, and cherish yourself and see yourself for who you are because you're a beautiful soul. Here with an amazing purpose, here to do amazing things. Okay, So here you go, you have the eight ways I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, hit the like button. Maybe leave, leave, even leave a comment below. Let me know how do you feel about this. What do you do to really improve your self-esteem and how you see yourself? I would love to know. I just want you to know that I'm so ex excited and grateful that you're here with me. And be sure to check out this next video about removing those emotional wounds, those emotional blocks, so you can start healing all of that on a deeper level. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Until then, make it an amazingly abundant, successful day. Namaste.